will just quickly go through uh, what we'll be doing this semester. Okay. Subse uh, pehle, if you can see the page, is pe I think what I have not yet done. Uh, you can see all the topics. This page is not showing dates right now. So I'll be adding dates before every reading. What I would want you to do that uh, you try reading uh, the upcoming um, uh, reading jo hai, usko you try reading it before the class so we can have a better discussion. Okay. Uh, number one, if you look at this page, this page is telling you about some rules for the classroom. Uh, I believe that you are old students, so you already know what are the rules for um, attendance and uh, leave at, you know, at the university. Or it is saying that if you have emergencies, that um, university requires that attendance should be 75%. It is saying 70%, it's not 70%, it is 75% at the moment. So your minimum attendance should be 75%. If you need leave for whatever reason, for emergencies or for sickness or urgent work, anything, you should try uh, managing your leave within 30% allowed uh, you know, uh, university allows you and HEC allows you 25% uh, of days. So I would suggest that you, uh, we have uh, this, this semester will finish very soon. We'll have classes for three weeks only, sorry, four weeks. And uh, we will have the last session on 26th of August. After 26th of August, I'll be giving you uh, a week to 10 days or a week to two weeks, you can say, to finish your final exam. Uh, during the semester, I'll be giving you a couple of different assignments because we are short of time. So normally, I give four assignments to students during the semester. So I will not give you four assignments. I will be giving you lesser assignments. And you will get a chance to develop your midterm examination into uh, one of your assignments into your midterm examination and uh, we hope that I would also allow you to develop your midterm in your final examination. That does not mean that you will be working on only one assignment or one midterm or one uh, final paper this semester. You will be doing be working on more than one. It can be, I think, it. Uh, we normally try that it, there should be four assignments, but I think we'll have perhaps two or three assignments this semester. So try, you do not miss, miss any of the assignments. And for the assignments, we have a very simple rule as we will be discussing uh, different films uh, during this course. And we will be uh, going through theories of uh, film, uh, uh, film theory and criticism through looking at films. So I would want that when you do your assignments or mid or final exam, you do see uh, the films properly. You describe the scene and you also discuss dialogues in your paper. Uh, which means that you will be discussing scenes and dialogues theoretically and you will be writing your papers academically. Academically does mean that you will use readings from class for doing, uh, for attempting your assignments and you can also use other readings for doing the assignments, okay? Uh, as I said that it will be difficult to, I, I, because of connectivity issues and electricity issues because I don't have electricity since last night, it may not be possible for us to connect uh, to conduct this session for three hours today. So what I'll do that we, we just go through uh, uh, the things and we try uh, doing whatever we can uh, do during this session today. Okay. Uh, here it says grading criteria. Can you all see it? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Right. I'll try showing showing you the grading criteria from CMS uh, because um, I believe you can also access uh, CMS and uh, you can see the the final uh, grading criteria there as well. So here it says um, film theory and criticism, and you can see that it says assignments twenty five percent. Normally, I give assignments for 50% marks, but it says assignments and research paper. So you can see all together your assignments and exams have 75% uh, marks. 
Uh, apart from that, uh, you will be giving a presentation of 10% marks. I would suggest that nobody misses the presentation because if you miss the presentation, you will lose 10% marks directly. Now, what is a presentation? For presentation, you will be asked to present one of your assignments or one of your midterm exams. Okay? Uh, you can uh, just select your assignment or midterm exam. For presentation, it will be uh, for one student. Each student will be presenting one uh, one of his assignments or her assignments and one of the papers, which means that it will not be a group presentation by a number of students. You, are, you will be asked to present your own paper to the class. Uh, make sure when you are presenting, you do select a scene for discussion and you discuss that scene academically in your presentation, during the presentation, which means uh, do find some literature to support your discussion and whatever you are seeing in the scene, uh, you discuss the dialogue, you discuss the scene, describe the scene. Uh, describing scene also means that uh, I'm not asking you to give me two page summary of uh, the film. Uh, summaries should not be more than four, five, three to five or seven lines in length. Okay, so I'll be needing short summaries of film, but you can definitely discuss scenes uh, for longer duration. Okay, so uh, on this page, uh, you can also see the course outline we used for the past semester. Okay, uh, at the bottom of the page, you will see it says library and it also says the archives. In archives, you will find uh, what we have done in the past. Uh, you will also see uh, some of the student assignments posted here uh, because um, what I did uh, in a um, couple of different semesters that I allowed students to use one of the series for writing script, which means that um, I can give you an example. One of my students used this first reading here for writing script for the final exam. In most cases, final exam should be your research paper. But in certain cases, in this course, I do allow students to use theory for writing script as their final exam. OK, uh, which doesn't mean that you will be submitting script uh, when you are submitting different assignments or midterm exam in this course. No. Uh, in most cases, you will be submitting research papers for your assignments and for your mid-exam. But for, for the final exam, I would allow you to use one of these uh, theories uh, for writing a script. Uh, I have posted one of such scripts on this page, that is at, at the bottom of the page. Uh, that is by a senior uh, film and TV student. Uh, Saba Chahil and Ramna Dasti and uh, there was another student, Sharjeel. Uh, they used theories from this page for writing script. Yamna Dasti and uh, Saba Chahil uh, used the first reading for uh, writing their script for the final exam. You can see here I have posted two different articles. The first article says, what shapes myself? And the second article says, uh, boys, girls, and their media experiences. Okay, so in this class, uh, Saba used uh, what shapes myself to write uh, her fine uh, write script for the final exam. What she did uh, here, children are discussing their experiences. Uh, these experiences are very important for construction of their personal identity. So uh, what Saba did that she uh, picked up a number of events that children have discussed in this uh, paper. This is a very short paper. It's, uh, it's five, six pages long. It has images and it also has a lot of text, right? So um, the, she used these uh, um, descriptions by students for writing the script. And uh, uh, Yamna Dasti used the other, uh, this, this research paper 
this is even shorter this is only three pages long she used this she converted this paper into the script so i'm saying in most cases you will be submitting assignments but for final exam i would allow students to use one of the readings uh, for writing their script which means you will have to pick up uh, text from the paper for writing your dialogues for the script this assignment is specifically useful for students who are coming from uh, film and tv department or any other student who is interested in writing scripts or who is interested in filmmaking okay um, all right um, on um, uh, here here you see the next reading its title is emotions okay uh, this reading uh, discusses different emotions that help in developing uh, or constructing identities of children in particular and um, if you look at uh, this page the page says there are certain emotions mentioned here it says love fear uh, envy sadness surprise anger pride and joy uh, these are not the only emotions that, that are discussed in this reading there are other emotions that are also discussed uh, those emotions include uh, shame uh, and anger as you are looking at it you can see there are different things the different images are posted here as well and uh, we will discuss it uh, and these are the feelings that television or screen uh, creates in different people okay so this reading actually describes uh, how what role emotions play in children's development or in our lives uh, you can see that uh, these are images drawn by children children are again saying uh, what kind of emotions they have at different stages in life here you can see uh, what difference age makes in uh, developing emotions in different children okay and uh, then it also says that uh, what uh, effect culture has on uh, development of one's emotions and as we go down you would see that it starts discussing each emotion separately uh, when we will be reading uh, this uh, particular reading we will it will be in two three days from today uh, for this particular reading i would ask you to select one emotion each and uh, try understanding what is written on the page none of the emotions is longer than page okay if you read it the descriptions uh, basically end on the same page or the end in the middle of the page so these descriptions are not very long so for example you see here here on this page they have discussed two different emotions one is being moved and the other is love so i would suggest that um, uh, i will post uh, the list uh, alphabetically and you can select one of the emotions in the order they are mentioned here okay so each one of you should pick one emotion from here for example if one student picks picks up being moved another student can pick up pick love and still another can pick anger or aggression or uh, shame from this reading uh, please try finding a film clip or a clip from a tv serial that suits the mentioned emotion uh i would ask you to show me the clip or show everyone the clip during the discussion and discuss the emotion that you have selected okay so we will be doing this in 2 3 days from today it it says second reading uh it's the second reading on the page so i would say that we will do it on t on saturday this week so for saturday this week i would uh, i would suggest that each of each one of you picks one emotion from here and finds a clip that suits the emotion and then uh, try discussing it with your fellow students during the class okay is it clear or should i explain it again clear ma'am okay 
So now I think uh, I'll go to uh, the next one. I said this exercise is for Saturday. So please stay prepared. Just pick one emotion, one clip, and we'll discuss it in Saturday's class. Okay? Uh, Ma'am, it can be oh, it can be from any of the films. It can be from any of the films. It, it should be a video clip. So it can be from a film, it can be from a TV program, it can be from a children's program, it can be from music videos, it can be from anywhere. Just make sure that the clip that you have selected is suitable for the emotion under discussion and the description that is given there. For example, it would des describe aggression as attacking someone, right? Attacking means that you get closer to somebody to attack that person. Physical proximity is important in that case. So I would say that when you read the descrip description of the emotion, carefully see what it is it says and accordingly, uh, accordingly select a clip for discussion, okay? After that, okay. after that it says humor, all right? So uh, this, uh, this is a very short reading. And uh, if you see this reading, it is just describing, it says false alarm theory, how humor works, why people laugh, okay? So for example, it is showing you two pictures on the page right here. Uh, in the first one, a dog or a wolf is attacking a rabbit. So you get scared. In the second one, you see that rabbit is fine, but the attacker has disappeared, you see the skeleton. So all of a sudden you realize that uh, alarm or the threat alarm was false. Uh, nothing happened to the rabbit. So I said it's a very short reading. It just discusses anatomy of humor. So we will be reading uh, this. We'll do this in the week following next week. Uh, I think Monday next week. Uh, then it says visual pleasure and gaze. This is the only gender theory that I have included in uh, this class. And uh, we will be discussing what roles women have uh, in uh, film and uh, how male audience look at female images in film, how they gaze at them. So basically this focuses on uh, visual player and gaze. Uh, while discussing it, we will discuss. We will uh, be briefly discussing four different theories, uh, four different types of looking behaviors. By four different types of looking behaviors, I mean uh, first look is by the director or the cameraman or the production team, which means those the people who make films have the first look on the content and the people and the viewer has the second look right so first look is through the camera second look is by the viewer on the screen any idea what would be the third look or fourth look Can you see me? Can you see the content here? Can you guess what would be the third or fourth look? Are you hearing me? Yes, ma'am. Hearing okay. you, but... Uh, yes, ma'am. Miss, would you explain the first three again? I said first look is through the camera, which means filmmaker or the production team has the first look on the content or the story. And the second look is by the viewer when he is watching the film. So first look is by the filmmaker or the production team. And the second look is by the viewer when he's looking at the screen. The third look is when viewers discuss the content, which means uh, they create a debate on the content. 
they agree or disagree with what is happening or they just try to discuss what is happening on the screen so third look is interactive first look is by the filmmaker second is by the viewer and third is by a number of viewers which means number of viewers are discussing the content and when they are discussing it they are creating a debate on the content so third look is interactive so um does the third look involve criticism yes definitely criticism because when people discuss it with each other they definitely criticize the content okay um, would the fourth look be in present time or the people who watch the movie or the the content in future right uh, the, the fourth look is already there because uh, different scholars when they when they read what others have written about first and second and third look they they try to see if there is a fourth look or fifth look or sixth look so paul willman um, uh, wrote an article about the fourth look and the fourth look is by the screen on the viewer okay so you would say Uh, the fourth look would actually be by the elite or uh, or the people who control the content right so he wrote an articles it's looking at you so it means that screen was traditionally used for propaganda for uh, creating uh, for propaganda means that it was used to influence audience so paul willman wrote an article and he said and he said that uh, the screen grabs your attention and it grabs attention of hundreds of you are sitting in the cinema and like a gorgon it does not allow you to look anywhere else so it captures your attention it captures everybody's attention it overpowers everyone like a gorgon and that's why he called it fourth look right so visual pleasure and gaze would be linked with the fourth look and how uh, content is produced on for screen or how woman image or female image is used for attracting attention of the male audience in the cinema so i said this is the only reading i believe that we have uh, on visual pleasure or how women's image is used for uh, attracting attention of the viewers uh, we will also be discussing editing techniques uh, these are the techniques that uh, uh, padovkin and eisenstein uh, developed about 100 years ago Uh, if you know both padovkin and eisenstein were filmmakers okay uh, i am not trying to play it right now but i have posted these links uh, in google classroom so you can actually see what padovkin and eisenstein say about filmmaking techniques okay let me share computer sound with you uh okay now can you see this uh when we play this you would come across uh, padovkin's and eisenstein's uh, editing techniques i said both of them were filmmakers so as they were the, uh, they were two of the greatest greatest filmmakers of all times so these two filmmakers not only uh, made films but also this theoretically discussed how they were editing their films and how they were shooting their films and shooting is discussed through editing techniques because there they emphasize what kind of shots they were using okay um this this says eisenstein's techniques so uh you can say uh the this is the word montage just a hi there today we're going okay 
Okay. So I said the, uh, he has mentioned uh, five editing techniques here. If you go, if you watch these videos, you can see the difference between um, Eisenstein's and Padovkin editing techniques. Uh, we will not be editing at all. We will just be looking at images and see which one is metric and which one is rhythmic and which one is tonal and overtonal. Tonal and overtonal are specifically, uh, the two are specifically associated to psychology behind uh, videos. I haven't asked you so far which department you are coming from. I think after I finish this, uh, finish going through the content of the course, I will briefly try to find out from you which department you are coming from but i hope that this course will be interesting for you because we will be looking at images uh, critically and we'll see uh, when i say uh, editing techniques of these people we only uh, see what impact different types of shot have on the viewer for example uh, if you are looking at the image of a, of a male and a female you would pro you could probably say it is about romantic relationship but if you were looking at the image of a man and a coffin you would say uh, it's about death or sadness okay so we will see how what meaning two images have together we will see what meaning a close up has when it is put against a white shot or an establishing shot right so we will be looking at images in terms of meanings when we uh, uh, when we go through this uh, these things on editing techniques of the two both were from russia and um, uh, they did they produced a lot of political content especially uh, eisenstein produced famous films known as battleship potemkin and october and uh, these are included in world classics if you get time, do look at those films. And if you watch the film, A Man with a Movie Camera, we will not have time to discuss uh, A Man with a Movie Camera in this course. But if you look at the film, you would learn uh, what kind of experiments filmmakers were, uh, were having or doing at the time they were producing the films, right? Uh, then I have uh, another article on Pakistani films, it says folklore. Uh, folklore, I'm not sure if you are very familiar with different types of folklore. Can anyone mention name of a folklore or any folklore from Pakistan? Uh, if you can hear me, can you mention a folklore from Pakistan? Um, see, Joe, uh, these love stories are they called? Are they folklore? See, he Of course, Didi, Of course, okay. they are the folklores. Um, which department are you from? Uh, I'm from psychology department. All right. Uh, anyone from TFT? Yes, ma'am. Mushal. Okay, Mushal. Uh, are you? Can you mention another folklore? Uh, somebody just mentioned. Uh, ma'am, uh, can we call Romeo and Juliet as a folklore? Uh, they will be of Pakistan. Ha! Huh, that is not from Pakistan. Uh, I is it from Pakistan? GD, I asked Miss, um, Gigi, what are you? Miss, this is the Mirza Sahiban's story. Sassi Pannu. Are these all folklores? They are all folklores. Okay. So, uh, sometimes these, um, these songs and these kawalis that are you know uh, just, you know linked with the culture or with the you know with the specific area like from Sindh or there is this one place that is called, that is called Sevan Sharif in uh, in the area of Sindh 
So can we say that the Kavali sung there are also folklores? They like they, the they are uh, yeah. You can call uh, you know like folk folk music. Uh, we okay. have folk music. We have folklores, and uh, we have classical forms of uh, music and uh, all these things. You know as well. Uh, in the, is it the stories. Uh, we will not be discussing stories as such. We will not be discussing discussing a lot of stories, but in this reading, we have one particular folklore from Sindh. Its uh, title is mm -hmm. Umar Marvi. Have you heard of the names? I no, ma'am. Yeah, okay. So this folklore is from Sindh. And uh, this article just says Umar Marvi and representations of Sindh, cinema and modernity in the margins. So these are two French uh, PhDs, Julian Levesque and Camille Bui. They wrote this article pretty recently. It says 2014. What they did, because Umar Marvi is Pakistan's first Sindhi film. It was produced in 1956. So what they did, they, they picked up this film and they tried to see what is the relationship between the film and political environment in the country, right? So in 1956, uh, government of Pakistan had issued uh, mm -hmm. one unit rule, which means government had merged identities of uh, four provinces of Pakistan, which are Sindh, Punjab, Lochistan, and KPK. Government finished their individual identities and declared Pakistan one unit. So when government ended identities of the provinces, we have four provinces today. We did not have four provinces all of a sudden in 1956. And from 1956 until the start of 70s, for about 14, 15 years, you can say uh, Pakistani provinces had lost their identity. So this article only discusses that how provinces or people from different provinces reacted to government's decision of eliminating provincial identities. So this article is just discussing how academia, especially professors and students, because uh, they were strongly protesting for the elimination of Sindhi identity. They were all on roads. And uh, that's why Pakistan started producing Sindhi films back in 1956. In two years, Pakistan produced four Sindhi films. So this particular article actually discusses the relationship between cinema and government or specifically you can say between Sindhi cinema and Pakistan's government, West Pakistan's government or Pakistan's government because in 1956 we had both West and East Pakistan. So this article is discussing the relationship between the film and the government. So you can say it's, uh, it's discussing uh, the backdrop against which a film is produced and Sindhis, because they claim they have uh, their language is strongly political because of the seven folklores. So this reading is important because it uh, it describes what is the relationship between cinema and politics or movements of a particular time. Uh, then under this heading, you can see. Uh, a number of readings. These are uh, these. The heading is propaganda, nationalism, war, and history. Uh, if you can see, it says atomic cafe on the top. Any guesses what atomic cafe means? No, ma'am, not me. Any guesses what atom means? It is Miss about atom. Yes. Hota hai, but 
Atom Cafe is a movie or some sort. I don't. Yes, know. it is a movie. It is a movie. Atomic Cafe is a movie. This movie is hilarious actually, because uh, it is a filmmaker's comment on the atomic blast on Hirosh Hiroshima and Nagasaki. and uh, this is quite funny it's the film is funny you'll find it hilarious if you watch this film uh, you'll uh, probably end up laughing i think it was available on youtube and uh, for instance this reading says that uh, people had parano paranoia after the atomic blast at uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki Americans were more scared than the rest of the world because they felt what happened if somebody attacked America with the atomic bomb so in a scene you would see that doctor is checking a fever of a patient he looks at the chart and says i can't understand why people are scared because if 15% people die in the atomic blast 85% will have more to eat and more to themselves right at another place in the film somebody says since the atomic blast his coffin business has tremendously increased so you can see that uh, film is sarcastically approaching the blast it's basically hilarious because a uh, director collected uh, film clips and all uh, data from past years he collected uh, music uh, he collected advertisements he collected uh, news clips and anything that was uh, used to give news to people about the atomic blasts and uh, following the atomic blast in america there were a number of cafes that were named atomic cafe so you would see that you are going to a cafe and the cafe's name is atomic cafe let's meet for coffee at the atomic cafe okay and a lot of music was also produced so it's a compilation film because uh, the filmmakers collected archives of 40 years to edit this film and when they juxtaposed different kind of clips together they ended up with a very funny or very hilarious kind of documentary um we will not uh, read all of these readings that are mentioned here because there are a number of readings mentioned here we will see if we can go through uh i think one to two of these because they are focusing on uh, propaganda nationalism war and history as i said the first one is um, hilarious uh, victory at sea is from world war 2 i think all of you are familiar with drones are you yes yes please. right yeah. during world war 2 there were no drones World War 2 was the first time when Americans Russians and Japanese had put cameras on their planes and ships um uh, as uh, the second world lost world war do you know what second world means we live in the third world we know about the first world what about the second world miss uh, second world was um i think wo jo soviet union wala time tha aur wo sara tha i think jab communist blocks the exactly. that was the second world yes communist blocks second world is actually the communist blocks it means russia china and at that time also japan so all of the communist blocs or communist countries uh i'm sure definitely poland 
and other they were part of the communist bloc we called them excess power at the time so what i was saying that um, all these uh, countries had put modern technology which means cameras on their ships and planes during world war 2 as the excess powers lost the war american got hold of their footage so today you will find all that footage from world war 2 in some museum in usa so victory at sea is created from that footage that was found on american ships and or japanese uh, choppers for instance if they were attacking an american ship they will uh, su- suicide bombers were jumping down on the ships from japanese choppers or helicopters so japanese were shooting from the top and americans were shooting from below so they had footage from both sides this is real war footage americans edited uh, victory at sea from that real war footage because they had footage from both sides and they used victory at sea for propaganda during vietnam war and uh, at the end of cold war era so it's an interesting film of uh, you know how you can create uh, great films even from archives so in this case they used archival footage to create film so i i have included this because i thought it would be useful to see uh, how to create comedy out of war and how to make films from archival footage films that are not just boring but great films of all times the next one says sexy girls heroes and losers so we have this kind of triangle almost in every film or drama right somebody has to win and somebody has to lose so this article just looks at sexy girls heroes and losers and the next one says differences and diversity it means we live in a world where we have people of all type of colors all type of cultures and all type of races so it just says how we can uh, uh, deal with differences in diversity in present day world uh it you can see it has also a reading on whiteness as supreme for supremacy or blackness fact of blackness whiteness and the uh, differences and diversity in particular is looking at different cultures of the world so that is not about black and white only that is about people from different parts of the world uh this course outline is tentative so i would say that uh, while uh, during the course if i feel that we should include some other reading which will be useful uh, i would probably swap one of the topics with the other i will inform you beforehand i will be adding dates on these topics so i would suggest please try reading uh, beforehand at least try familiarizing yourself with the content and if you can find things which you feel are relevant to what you are reading here so do also note those quotations or uh, things for discussion in this class uh, presentations i said would be for 10% so this 20% does not apply to you 10% applies i will change it here in one of my past courses i did mark presentation at 20% i said ke these are very important because i want to understand how well you have understood the content of the film and how well you can use those for discussions can you suggest a film clip any film scene or film clip that you think we could watch right now Now the film is supposed to be released one. Um, 
not essentially. If you want to suggest something else, we can certainly look at something else. I was actually reading Zindagi Tamasha, so I was going to say the same. Okay. Yeah, I was thinking as well. The trailer. Any comments on the clip that we just watched? The fact that it was supposed to be released in January, and it's been seven months that it's still on, you know, this verge of not being, you know, included in the theater or, you know, for the public to watch, just Wait, because. Like, no, it's allowed. Allowed. Allow. It's allowed. Allow. I think it's allowed, but still, yeah, it's been recently. Yeah, so, but so we still have a short at watching this. Yeah. So you're saying it will be released in cinemas, Pakistani cinemas? Yes. yes. Yeah. When Corona is over, then they have a plan of releasing it. Before, uh, the censor board was not letting it uh, be released. Yeah. So it's not. Because I, I was reading a few articles that Khadim Rizvi again is saying that you know it won't be released. We won't let it happen. And something like maybe the you know again it's a bit you know an off situation, no idea what happens. So we're hoping that they do take off with it. Yeah, yeah. the name the name is Khadim Razvi. Uh, I mean it it looks similar but it is different. So Sorry. you know that's perfectly fine because I think Razvi and Rizvi are often mixed up. So. Okay. Khadim Rizvi said, okay. okay, so the ban is uh, the ban is cancelled. So you you think it will be? What does that imply then? Will it? Ma'am, why was it banned at first? Like, why was it banned? For what reason? Okay, so what? Well, I think okay. there were two scenes from this movie which um, a group of people thought were not suitable for our culture. The overall um, message that the trailer portrays is, I think, a lot of people wouldn't be um, tolerating right. yeah. what you say. Right. Okay. Because at this point, he is saying that yeah. Malvi, jo bacha bazi karte hain, yahan se kaat diya na. Say what about the clerics who uh, molest children? Probably molest. M is left, mm. and rest of it is. Uh, yeah. removed from here, so it means that child molest means child molestation. Molest I read two articles that the last one was also cut short, where um, Amolvi says that I will not be able to do it. There was no complete scene, there was no objection. Okay, uh, is that scene in this clip? Yes, ma'am. It's the last scene, I think. Where the guy is in a festival and another movie says that I'm not going to look at it. Yes, this one. So that's our picture. This was here, right? This one? Yes, this one. Because he's saying that he doesn't understand it. What was he saying, right? That he was going to look at it. Yes. Right. So, Miss, I think it's a super backlash. It's like we have because it, in some odd sense, is like an expose on what our society is. The movie in itself. Yes, it is. Yes, I think. And um, when it especially yeah. uh, includes uh, the religious, you know, identities here. उन्होंने अब इसके ऊपर ये क्या ही प्रॉब्लम उन्होंने जो रीजन इसकी बैन के पीछे वो ये उन्होंने लिखा है कि दिस इस एंटी रिलिजियस एंड इट इस यू नो इंसल्टिंग फॉर द रिलिजियन सम सम समवे लाइक दैट सो जहाँ पे वो रिलिजियन की बात आती है वहाँ पे देखें यू नो यस इट इट साउंड्स लाइक दैट यू नो दैट � they do not like voicing against real actions because इसने जो शुरू में बोला यहाँ पे जब ये छत पे लड़ा इस जगह पे he says you know ठीक है 
सो so, ये वाला कमेंट और फिर नारा लगाने वाला कमेंट दीज टू कमेंट्स इन पर्टिकुलरली इन पर्टिकुलर पॉइंट टू हाउ रिलीजियस क्लैरिक्स रिएक्ट टू फिल्म दे वुड लाइक इट इफ इट इज यूज फॉर देयर प्रोमोशन बट दे डू नॉट लाइक डिस्कशन ऑफ रियलिटी इन सिनेमा बिकॉज दे फील इट वाई डू यू थिंक दैट दे वुड अपोज शोइंग इट ऑन स्क्रीन um yes because i think this movie criticizes uh, it criticizes our society kafi heavily and the flaws that are within our society and it's uh, maybe it's hard for people to accept that there can be flaws even within religious groups as well um that they can be practicing their values in a wrong manner i am sorry if i'm being offensive i just don't know how to word it differently कि ये जो मूवी है थोड़ा सा क्रिटिसाइज करती है कि किस तरह प्रोटेस्ट गलत वजहों के लिए यूज हो सकते हैं एंड इट्स बेसिकली प्रोमोटिंग के इट्स देर कैन बी डिफरेंसेस टू अपोजिंग वैल्यूज कैन एग्जिस्ट इन द सेम यू नो आई थिंक दैट दोज हु you know point of fingers at i mean whether it is zindagi tamasha or whether it was a uh, muhammad hanif's novel a case of exploding mangoes in which he is talking about general zia and his assassination and how mm-hmm. things were unfolding in that time so that book is not uh, allowed uh, is not published in pakistan in urdu they don't allow it because Listen, and he also it was it when he was published in yeah it was published in india and then it came it, it was being sold uh, around the world and people got to read it but still not in the pakistan uh, and not in urdu so these reasons are like because they make people question so and they don't want that so yeah that is the reason enough for them to you know right uh, Uh, for for uh, for publishing in urdu somebody will have to translate i think authors it was authors choice to write it in english they did it they did it uh, they did have a translated uh, uh, version of it and the publishing and it was also you know requested to the publishers to do it but uh, and a few uh, one of them also agreed uh, upon it a few copies were even published but then you know this it was strictly told the, to them that they're not supposed to sell it and it was you know banned to be sold in urdu in the copies not a single copy was sold so yes all right all right so that's that's good to know uh, basically if you can but have there were you... there was some sorry um, no that's there were some fine Okay, there were some claims that uh, I think the religious groups were saying that this movie might, uh, uh, you know, push people to deviate from Islam and prophet peace be upon him. So I don't know how that would happen in result of this watching this movie because there's nothing. It's it's that. not essential that it will uh, you know that that's um, that's not essential that uh, people will deviate from Islam. But this uh, movie is definitely. criticizing uh, uh is religious clerics right and in this yeah. scene in this image that is in front of you right now you can also see kaaba yes. can you see they they have added it here yeah. so you can also see people who are around kaaba you can see some of them look like uh, arabs themselves by the way they are dressed and uh, different nationalities perhaps are visible in this particular image uh, people of whether black or white come to kaaba so in a way the film has uh, created a link between religions and child molestation uh, even if it is through uh, the religious clerics uh, you can't blame religion for it but religious clerics represent islam and the kind of uh, images he has created it is fun who set has created so one thing that is very important uh, you can see i i think i saw a transgender as well in one of uh, the scenes yes right 
so you can hear, hear right so people are actually pulling him out of his house and then there was a dance scene and and the boy was saying hamari apni marzi ka mahol hai kahan pe tha wo somewhere uh isse pehle yahan pe and apparently is this her daughter his daughter here yes, yes. yes. so yeah. you okay so the film is pointing to various um, kind of uh, complexities you know like father daughter relationship and uh, how his sexuality affects his social profile you know you, you could see that when uh, in one of the images people had put black ink on his face uh, here i think they were he was i saw a poster here with ink on his face mrs se pehle iske yahan se pehle nahi nahi thoda sa aur aage puche okay so uh, what we try doing that we try finding uh, one particular issue and uh, if somebody had to write a paper on this film i would um, i would say that uh, if you feel the film is released is it already released on netflix nahi nahi miss okay so you are just think it will like take ji it won't be released on netflix even after it's released in the cinemas okay so the uh, uh, it said mad khuset has said so that he will not release on netflix no oh, the i was reading something on uh, 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 related to it that uh, people were talking about how it's covid and no one would be able to go to the cinema so it should be released on the netflix so it was something related to i'm not like i don't know that netflix doesn't take but uh, these films from i don't know what what was the reason behind it but i read it that netflix won't be taking this film i think uh, if netflix flix won't be taking it it may not be taking it because of uh, some rules in pakistan because netflix is now mm-hmm. is presently present in pakistan and if it does something against government's wishes so government would probably put ban on netflix in pakistan and that is something that netflix will not want You yes know? probably so that yeah. would be a reason for business reasons they may uh, and for the yeah. laws of the country where they are present if the laws uh, disagree secondly this um, this film uh, may have an effect on social order yes here was the image uh, just here yes so i was saying that uh, this film uh, faced heavy censorship uh, you can see it here this is some kind of political banner probably they were uh, he may have been part of some political campaign so he has lost all of his uh, uh, he lost his position in society for this act so what i was saying that uh, this film in particular has a very strong relationship with censorship rules in pakistan so censorship rules uh, i think uh, if you have heard of motion picture ordinance of pakistan 1979 uh, there you would find at least nine rules which means uh, you should not publish or produce anything that hurts feelings of public at large uh, and you can use film for um, the promotion uh, for the promotion of your race creed and culture and you cannot hurt anything which is called national emotion so i think uh, this particular film can hurt national emotion or national sentiment people in pakistan can come on roads if this film is um, released in cinemas for example you somebody said just now that uh, khadim khadim razvi said we will not let it 
uh, exhibit anywhere in the country, which means social order will be disturbed. So motion picture. Also. I think that um, if you look at the other side, the ones that are supporting it, so the backlash that the government or Joe are facing from people who are in support of this movie as well, that is also quite a lot. So I think that if we look at in some case or another to exhibit or portray ourselves as a nation that is in progression and that is not in you know uh, retardation they might have to release it because uh, you know with, with the power of social media and people who are speaking out more so um, you know i think ke maybe isko release karne denge. okay perfectly fine uh, there would be if if they release it uh, they would definitely release it under the law. What I was saying that in the law, nine rules are written. One rule is morality, decency, and sexuality. So if the film involves uh, any kind of uh, content in terms of words or images, uh, the censor board will remove it, excise it, right? So if they allow to release it after a lot of or a number of excisions, I think its real uh, message will be gone. For example, Shweb Mansoor was not allowed to uh, screen or exhibit Varna as it is. So when government censored its scenes, uh, when the film was released, if you know, it it failed. It uh, it it failed in the box office. Uh, people said it was a lousy film. So I don't know if it was a lousy film because important scenes were removed from the film, or if it was a lousy film because filmmaker or director did not deliver properly. Right. So I was saying the f films pass censorship if they are not, uh, if, you know, if they have religious, um, uh, they cannot criticize religion, they cannot, uh, you are not allowed to criticize religion or comment on Islam. This film comments on religion and Islam. Uh, censorship laws do not allow to hurt national sentiment. This film will hurt sentiment and people will be on roads. Uh, censorship laws allow do not allow showing content on um, showing sexual content or showing content that is immoral or indecent. So for screening this film, uh, Khusut will have to remove anything and everything that uh, hurts national sentiment, that hurts um, religious spirit or that uh, attacks on uh, national identity or Pakistan. So that's why I'm saying that if film passes the censorship laws, only then it will be released. So I don't know in which form it will be released. I can understand that for seven months they are probably running a social media campaign. They have uh, released it internationally because it had something here. Uh, it said Busan Film Festival, did it? Busan yes. Film Festival, right? So it means, it won. Yeah, yes, so he has at least internationally released it. Yeah. So, Miss, but like in the current state of what the censorship holds, so where do you see cinema progressing? Because currently the movies that are being produced, they're not, um, the content in itself isn't that great. They follow the same romantic trope, ya karke, or jo wali movies hoti hai, wo aksar hai, wo release nahi hoti. So where do you see cinema progressing, or do you see it progressing at all? Uh, well, that's an important question. That is an important question. So in in the backdrop of uh, against the backdrop of banning of this film, and this is not the first film that is banned in Pakistan. Uh, there were many films uh, before that were banned altogether, right? Uh, so, uh, for if you may have heard that General Muhammad Ziaul Haq uh, destroyed a lot of uh, archives of Pakistani film and record of Pakistani film 
under the uh, under the martial law ordinance mlo 1984 as he destroyed them all together we cannot access those materials anymore we cannot even learn properly why these those films or their records were destroyed altogether but zia did destroy a lot of content a lot of censorship record as well so um, i think these problems will remain there but despite the problems i i see that uh, in the new millennium uh, we uh, pakistan uh, had film schools at various universities for example nca has film and tv department bnu has theater film and tv department and more or less all universities across the countries are teaching uh, television production or film production in some manner so more people are producing films now and people have more venues for releasing their films for example uh, khuset has already released it at international film festivals right so international release is not affecting social order in pakistan right so i as long as people are making films and producing films i'm sure there will be a change it's a slow, slow process of change uh, i mentioned in my class discussion yesterday i haven't mentioned it in your class that uh, when when working women appeared in film uh, films were uh, every film has an opening a middle part and a closure so femme fatale films ended at the death of the femme right working women had to die at the end of the film in 1940s in 1970s after 30 years there was a change in treatment of working women in film then in 80s there was further change in 90s there was more change and in new millennium there was further change so you can say that uh, change is a very slow process uh, as i said that first change was after 30 years in treatment of working women you can say that uh, uh, addressing issues of sexuality or religion in pakistan will also take some time good part is we are discussing it in classroom right now so because people are discussing these topics in classroom i had a reading in one of my theoretical classes on uh, abortion in the past abortion and television so we can say that uh, the process even if it started so mm -hmm. no i have a question ji ji bataiye can you hear me ji ji i can hear you mm -hmm. i was asking you who is deciding the parameters कि क्या डिसेंसी है और क्या नहीं है क्योंकि आई रिमेंबर देर इज अ मूवी कॉलेज ऑफ वानी फिर नहीं आनी एंड देर लाइक फोर मैरिड मैन हु गो आउट इन पता नहीं दुबई या कहाँ पर वुमेन ठीक है तो वो वहाँ वहाँ पर डिसेंसी नहीं आती लेकिन जैसे हम आपको कोई रियलिटी दिखाने लगते हैं जैसे पेरिक्स है वहाँ पर डिसेंसी आ जाती है तो ये डबल स्टैंडर्ड्स कौन डिसाइड करता है ऑल राइट गवर्नमेंट कुछ नहीं की है इट्स अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग क्वेश्चन as well in the cinema because agar hum us tarah morality ke concept se dekhe hain aur pakistan ko jo hum kehte hain ki it's a very you know a uh, moral country us tarah to there were women in bikinis who were dancing uh, in the songs mm. and there were men who were cheating on their wives to mm. wo kahan pe kahan se decide hua ki ye theek hai uh you are absolutely right uh i l i i haven't posted a particular reading in any of my classrooms but i can uh, i think i can post it here and that particular reading is on uh, censorship i have posted readings on visual pleasure but i haven't posted any reading on censorship but there is a particular reading that actually uh, answers the question uh, what's your name sorry i can't see the screen right now so i i, I didn't see who asked the question about censorship ma'am komal komal acha komal aap 
आपका जो क्वेश्चन है उसका सिंपल आंसर ये है कि वी हैव अ सेंसरशिप बोर्ड इन बोर्ड वी हैव ट्वेल्व मेंबर्स एंड दोज ट्वेल्व मेंबर्स कम फ्रॉम डिफरेंट सेगमेंट्स ऑफ सोसाइटी फॉर एग्जांपल दो आउट ऑफ दोज ट्वेल्व मेंबर्स फोर वुड बी फ्रॉम सिक्योरिटी डिपार्टमेंट्स विच मीन्स वन कैन बी from isi one can be from police one can be you, you know what i mean by security department people who are responsible for maintaining social order in pakistan and who are responsible for security of pakistan right so out of those uh, 12 members some members belong to these departments okay so four members represent security departments of pakistan police and uh, isi in, in uh, fia or any other right and then their four members belong to civil society which means one member can be from uh, it can be vice chancellor of a university or it can be any other important member of society so four people four persons should come from society and four others come from different departments of government it can be a secretary uh, it can be some other uh, you know secretary punjab or uh, somebody else from punjab secretariat or government of pakistan bureaucrats you know so you can say that these people come from different departments right so i haven't posted this uh, article in any of the classroom but i will post it there so if any of you is interested you can actually go through this uh, article as well as i said that board has 12 members those 12 members are changed at least after 2 years right so their tenure is not uh, very long they if government wants to remove uh, chairman film censorship board today he will remove and appoint somebody it will remove him and appoint somebody else so if uh, if one group of people is uh, censoring a film today there can be another group of people censoring the film the next day which means if i and you are sitting today there today and we decide to pass this bill we will pass it but if some somebody sitting there tomorrow decides it should not be passed or its license should be cancelled the new members will definitely cancel its license so you understand why the why it is not consistent because when people change decisions change okay so yes. if 12 people sitting on the table to today decide to pass this film it will pass or it will passed by majority vote but if people sitting there tomorrow say fail the film it's indecent immoral so jawani phir nahi aani passed because somebody sitting in the board approved its release okay so this particular article that i mentioned could you see the article when i shared it with you this one can you see this article it uh, says sexually mm -hmm. overwhelming dances vulgar mm -hmm. movements etc uh, if you see it has two columns one says one column says 1970 71 the other column says 2009 2010 uh, in this particular article Uh, this article actually com compares film from pre and post mo uh, motion picture ordinance uh, eras right uh, motion picture ordinance was uh, it says here 1979 motion picture ordinance can you see this on the top 19 pre and post 1979 film so you can see that uh, there is a list of uh, at least six films in the middle column it says najma एक फूल एक पत्थर टिक्का मथेदा घरिस्ती जेन बॉन्ड ऑपरेशन जीरो जीरो एट कराची एंड रोड टू सवाल 
I think uh, five of these are Urdu films and one is a Punjabi film. So before 1979, they removed sexually overwhelming content from six films. And after 1979, these are the films from 2009 and 10, they removed uh, sexual content only from only two films in 2009 and 10. So you can understand this was the time when uh, families stopped going to cinemas in Pakistan because films were, uh, they felt the films were indecent, immoral. They were showing a lot of sexual content. They were showing rain dances. Okay, so you can see this is this is uh, this is only showing which films sexual content was uh, uh, removed from six films before 1979s uh, in 1970 and 71, and uh, sexual content was removed from only two films in 2009 and 10. So it does not mean that sexual content was not there in other films released in 2009 and 10. It says it was removed from only two films. So I hope you understand what I'm trying to say, that it really depends on the board, what it passes and what it does not pass. So the board, people sitting on the table decide if film is suitable for screening. If they sign it, it will be released. If they say it should not be released, it, it would not be released, they can say, remove these scenes and then you will get a certificate for exhibition in Pakistani cinemas. Uh, film, uh, there was one more question earlier from somebody. Uh, the censorship board of Pakistan, uh, we call it CBFC, Central Board of Film Censors. Uh, India also calls it CBFC because British government left censor board of film censors when uh, Pakistan and India were created. So you can see we had censorship boards uh, before Pakistan and India were created. In America, there was a lot of cry on sexual content or immorality in films in 1940s. What the filmmakers did, they formed Filmmakers uh, Association themselves, they decided we do not want to give control to government if you do not form Motion Picture Association of America soon, government will form Motion Picture Association. And if government forms Motion Picture Association, government will become in charge of films. So people, uh, the filmmakers formed the association themselves and they started censoring films themselves. So there is a difference between Pakistani Film Censor Board and the American Film Censor Board. Where ours is government controlled and theirs is people controlled, filmmakers controlled. So end of the day, I think I probably answered your question. It's the people sitting on the table who decide what to show and what not to release. Okay. And the law says that you must have the certificate for release. So, any other question on this one? Because I think we are seeing a number of issues in this film. Uh, Khusat has clearly uh, included artifacts. For example, he included Kaaba here. He included uh, people of Arab and religious background here. So the film is definitely commenting on Islam and the film is definitely content commenting uh, people or Muslims or religious clerics. Uh, he is clearly saying Bacha Bazi by Malvis. Uh, he is clearly saying that uh, somebody of very religious back, background is sleeping with third gender and has uh, and is primarily primarily gay or bisexual right so we don't know what is the objective of the filmmaker we can probably try looking at his interviews or we can try speaking to him 
but we definitely know what the film is showing. Uh, it is a comment on uh, practitioners of Islam, definitely, and it uses Kaaba as an artifact. So it has a very, he's very strongly commenting on Islam. One thing that I would want from all of you while attempting assignments of this course, please uh, use title of the film, Zindagi Tamasha, for example, or name of the director, Khusit, as often as you can. If you keep using Zindagi Tamasha over and over again in your essay while writing the essay, or if you keep mentioning Khusit's name while writing an essay on this film, if I give you an assignment on the film, then or for any assignment on any film, I would say use the film title and the name of the director as often as you can, two, three times in a para. It will definitely control what you are writing. Because if you do not use the title of the film or the name of the director, you will be writing generally. So one way of writing specifically is keep using title of the film or the name of the director for discussion. Uh, this way you will stick to the discussion on the film and uh, you will write a better essay. And as far as rest of the strategies, uh, I would definitely want you guys to submit at least one assignment before midterm. As I said, you will be allowed to repeat your assignments for the midterm. So if you give me assignment in time, you will get feedback. Uh, you will know how to improve your essay or how, how to write a better essay because I will giving you suggestions. I will give you suggestions for improving the content, including the scene, discussing the dialogue theoretically. OK? Any question? Do you want to suggest another scene for discussion? Uh, somebody mentioned Javani Phir Nahi Aani. You think those clips will be available online and we can go to one of the clips? We can watch it trailer. All right. Let me find it. Thank you. Hey. Is one of the boys here? Is it Javani Phir Nahi Aane 2? Yeah, one or two. They have two uh, parts. I think they have posted two fully. I will select the trailer. Let's see the trailer. Ji, uh, is the, was this the right trailer? Yes, ma'am. All right. So, what did you notice here? What did you notice here? A lot of comments on marital relationships. Yeah. Yes, uh, I think let's say this movie attracts a lot of um, Pakistani population because the this kind of humor is what we usually discuss in our you know or drawing room talks as well. So this is something they, they can relate to uh, as much as I don't really prefer these kind of movies but this does attract audience. Okay, uh, that is right. Miss, I that think that is... that one thing that um, I think the plot does surround, uh, does uh, establish its humor based on the expense of like marital relations, okay. and it works upon like the notion that before in Pakistan there are a lot of people that after the wedding their lives are very difficult in some way. Mm -hmm. That's what they say, you know. So this does um, capitalize on that, and then the slapstick humor is used here a lot. And it's also that the women in the movie, especially the end, they show a little bit how 
वो डम ब्लॉन्ड काइंड ऑफ एस्पेक्ट भी आ गया इसके अंदर तो इट डज यूटिलाइज अ लॉट ऑफ क्लीशेज एंड ट्रोप्स टू क्या कहते हैं क्रिएट समथिंग दैट पीपल हियर वुड कंज्यूम एंड एंजॉय क्योंकि लोग यहाँ पर मेजोरिटी जो है वो इसी तरह की सोच रखते हैं जिसमें मेरिट हयात का जो एंट्रेंस सीन होता है उसमें वो काफी वो होता है कि द गाय कम्स टू यू नो सेव हर फ्रॉम क्या कहते हैं फ्रॉम थी वगैरह तो वो भी सारा फिर से भी इस्टेब्लिश करते हैं कि जिस तरह यूजली समथिंग दैट पीपल यूजली इंजॉय कि अच्छा द गर्ल इज इन ट्रबल एंड द गाय कम्स टू सेव हर तो काफी जो फन and even if there's nudity it's fine because as long as it's a pakistani film but you know it's not in pakistan it's not happening in pakistan so it's like it's the same thing like if an indian heroine is doing an uh, uh, some item song it's fine but if a pakistani uh, heroine uh, will do it then they have to face some this uh, backlash that okay you know this is a pakistani republic you know and uh islamic republic and you know how we are supposed to be and how not and i bet that if there were these four women who were doing the same thing that these men are doing then i'm sure the the, the, the it wouldn't get the same response the yes way they... i think there will be strong mm-hmm. objection of female sexuality miss uh, majina there was this um indian movie veere the wedding so uh, it has karina kapoor and everyone in it usme bhi there are four friends जो के पता नहीं क्या कह रही हैवन वॉच दैट मूवी लेकिन वो चार लड़कियों के बारे में सिमिलर सा ही प्लॉट है तो वो बैन हो गई थी पे अगेन इन सम वे even though you're trying to present a liberated front mm-hmm. you are sexualizing the women in any case but i think that that them. was that was a second issue pehla issue to yahi tha that we can't produce a movie which is all about ah, pakistan mein to ye tha main generally mm-hmm. baat kar rahi hu ki the movie mm-hmm. itself i didn't like it because it was presented ha mm-hmm. i didn't as such like the movie because it was it mm-hmm. presented superficially presented like this women liberation front but piche it was really like the same nonsense yeah right. okay lekin miss vijaya we have been studying uh, for four years ab yahan pe to hum trained ho chuke hai ki we try to look at the uh, psychological part of the everything in fact ek kisi cheez ka nahi to this movie is actually uh, perpetuating the same fact तो मैं बोल रही थी कि ये एक ही बात को परपेचुएट दोबारा करें जो कि ऑलरेडी हमारे माशरे में इतनी ज़्यादा है कि मर्दों का चीट करना बड़ा ही कॉमन एक चीज़ है हमारे माशरे में जिसके बारे में हम रोक भी करते हैं जिस तरह नूर ने बोला कि ड्राइंग रूम कॉन्वर्जेशन इसके बारे में होती हैं और तो बड़े कैजुअली हम बोल देते हैं कि वो चीटिंग है तो कोई नहीं मर्द है तो ठीक है तो आई वॉज इस थिंकिंग इतना प्रॉब्लमैटिक ये कॉन्टेंट है लेकिन इतना इसका प्रमोशन है और इतना सब कुछ सब ठीक है इसके बारे में नो बडी क्वेश्चन द फैक्ट कि ये आ, किसी के जहन के ऊपर क्या इमेज दे रहे हैं कि ये चीटिंग को दोबारा नॉर्मलाइज कर रहे हैं और फिर मर्दों के लिए नॉर्मलाइज कर रहे हैं बस अगर आप इसको जिंदगी तमाशा से कंपेयर करें तो आई फील लाइक दीज आर टू प्रॉब्लम्स दैट आर ऑन वेरी पोलर स्पेक्ट्रम्स 
जवानी फिर नहीं आने को बैक क्लैश जो था वो नहीं मिला था एंड इजिली क्या कहते हैं स्क्रीन एज कम्पेयर टू जिंदगी तमाशा जिसकी जो आई गेस द इंटेंसिटी ऑफ बींग प्रॉब्लमैटिक इज मोर देन वट जवानी फिर नहीं आने की थी या जो परसीव्ड इंटेंसिटी ऑफ बींग प्रॉब्लमैटिक है आई वुड से एटलीस्ट तो आई थिंक यहाँ पर भी ऑडियंसेस के ऊपर काफ़ी आता है वॉट वी परसीव टू बी रॉन्ग और वॉट वी परसीव टू बी राइट तो उसकी वजह से भी अ लॉट ऑफ गुड मूवीज आई बिलीव डू गेट ट्रैश बिकॉज ऑडियंसेज डोंट रिली रिस्पॉन्ड टू गुड कॉन्टेंट यहाँ पे इसीलिए जवानी फिर नहीं आनी या नाम नाम आलूम अफ्तार टाइप मूवीज जो हैं वो चलती हैं बट इन सम टू सम एक्सटेंट आई डू थिंक कि दीज मूवीज आर इम्पॉर्टेंट इज वेल क्योंकि सिनेमा अगर आप ओवरऑल देखें तो सिनेमा को आपने चलाना भी है तो इस तरह की कमर्शल मूवीज जरूरी भी होती हैं बट वो आई गेस दैट उससे पहले आपके पास एक प्रॉपर सिनेमा होना चाहिए और कोई और कंटेंट भी होना चाहिए बिफोर इस तरह की मूवीज जो हैं वो लॉन्च हो जवानी पर नहीं आनी जो मूवी है आई थिंक इट्स ट्राइंग टू जस्ट नॉर्मलाइज वट इज एक्सट्रीमली रॉन्ग वी जस्ट पीपल जस्ट डोंट लुक एट इट आई मीन अभी समन मैंशन कि हमारी नॉर्मल ड्राॅइंग रूम कॉन्वर्सेशन भी यही होती हैं ज़्यादातर ना कि शादी किस तरह बर्बादी है और मर्द बेचारे मजलूम है और औरतों को तो जैसे कोई सफरिंग है ही नहीं जबकि पीपल लाइक अस लाइक मोस्ट ऑफ अस इन दिस इवन इन दिस क्लास डू रियलाइज द फैक्ट दैट वुमेन आर द एक्चुअल विक्टम्स ऑफ पेट्रियार की इन दिस सोसाइटी तो आई थिंक कि जिंदगी तो माशा वॉज ट्राइंग टू डी नॉर्मलाइज वट स्ट्रॉन्ग एंड दिस इज ट्राइंग टू नॉर्मलाइज what's actually wrong and it, it's not ke if it would would come in the guise of comic or humor to it would make it right ye yeah, or uh, i don't think that but things that's what capitalism does it exploits ge- on the basis of gender humor norms and all that to i think ke zindagi tamasha is a way better effort but jawani pe nahi aani is actually not and such things should not be promoted actually Okay. Just an opinion. All right. Okay. There, there are two. Okay. Uh, you mentioned that. Um, let's say um, you mentioned that there are some seven laws uh, to pass censorship. Uh, to pass censorship. Or, life to pass. Ah, who got a lot of censorship? Or, who got a backlash? Me, lah, because of the content, which again, I don't think is. It's not. Uh, problematic uh, not at all problematic actually lekin for example jaise is tarah ki movies are live also mentioned ke itni objectification and sexualization of women hoti hai so i don't see how that past censorship and how they think that comes under decency and morality okay uh, one is that this particular film is uh, uh, pointing to male sexuality common man sexuality and zindagi tamasha is not uh, pointing to common man it's pointing to religious clerics right so i think that uh, public reaction or uh, something that i said is about social order in the country and people like uh, khadim razvi reacting that uh, we will not let it release or exhibit in pakistani cinemas is because uh, zindagi tamasha is targeting religious clerics or religion directly this film is not um, targeting religion directly it's pointing to common man or culture uh, or people who have money and can go abroad and have good time in bangkok and uh, these three guys happen to be pakistanis i suppose Uh, this uh, Farooq Sheikh Khan even says, "I love Nadia Yar." So, he says, "What did he say?" So, here, what did he say? 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 So, here, you know our approach would be academic uh, when we say ke uh, when we assess uh, 
if uh, when we make assessments like if film should be released or not released or if it will normalize you can perhaps uh, say that it is normalizing uh, sexuality male sexuality uh, i i'm sure you can discuss this point academically also uh, but in most cases uh, we will not uh, uh, write things generalistically because uh, journalists uh, in their articles do say that it should be banned or it should be finished or it should not be exhibited uh, what uh, we do in academia we try to analyze situations like if pakistani males uh, have good time in bangkok we would we would try to analyze what were the reasons behind uh, this behavior you know or we will uh, look at uh, at the content academically and we'll try to see why pakistani men do what they do and why pakistani men do not allow women to do, do same things you know because um, as somebody mentioned an indian film just now that is um, pointing to women's uh, mobility or equity or um, empowerment in terms of uh, uh, any decision in life Uh, you know decision about mobility or sexuality or work so we can actually look at uh, content in that way if if the film is empowering women or if the film is uh, showing something that men do men cheat on women and nobody questions and if women were to cheat everybody will question because in pakistan women's honor is a requirement and every woman should uh maintain that status of honorable uh, body she should maintain an or an honorable body that is a cultural requirement you know so we can certainly discuss things in that manner as well miss um वैसे um apart from the controversy uh, that followed in the tamasha ki screening uh, what contribution does that movie have in pakistan's film industry jaise ki it was also screened in the international film festival so pakistan film industry ke liye matlab kya contribution hai uh, i think we have to analyze it to talk about it uh, for example uh, i think uh, i'm not sure if channel 4 or bbc produced a film bachcha baaz uh, i heard about that documentary अफगानिस्तान पे थी बट दैट वॉट यू आर सींग इट वॉज ऑन एन इस्लामिक कल्चर एंड पाकिस्तान एंड अफगानिस्तान आर इस्लामिक कंट्रीज सो इफ पीपल फ्राम वेस्ट कम हियर एंड मेक फिल्म ऑन आई थिंक देर इज ऑल्सो फिल्म शायद ऑन पाकिस्तान ऑन अ सिमिलर टॉपिक Uh, because somebody just asked me to write a paper on aging and uh, female sexuality in pakistani films so i am still thinking about it i am thinking what to do or you know because i have been writing on uh, protagonists in the film i have not looked at uh, aged women in pakistani films so far and somebody has asked me to write a chapter on uh, aging and female sexuality in pakistani films so i'm still thinking about it you know like how to find certain films or uh, because then i have to look at the films in a particular way to write on sexuality of old women in pakistani films because films normally do not focus on old women they focus on male and female protagonists quite often in their teens or early 20s right so i think these all of these questions are important gender issues are important and religious issues are important uh, censorship rules do not allow to hurt religious sentiments of any part of society which means you cannot um, hurt religious sentiment of minorities or majority in particular because majority if this film is screened in cinema there is would be a chance that uh, 
people like uh, you know like uh, religious clerics will probably burn the cinema and nobody would want cinema to be burnt right we have very few cinemas left in pakistan so it's very important for us to save the cinema as well and uh, one cinema was burnt in karachi back in 1970s because the film had a scene in which a man married the second time without telling his first wife and then the two wives together beat him with their shoe uh, the man was uh, pathan and pashtuns in karachi burnt the cinema because they felt uh, the film did not represent pathan culture properly and pathan women will never beat their husband with the shoes so you can understand that a comic film scene actually resulted in burning the cinema so uh, this film is quite sensitive and i think censor board will have to carefully decide uh, if to let it um, release or exhibit in cinemas because uh, we do not uh, we definitely do not want social order being disturbed in the country and we definitely do not want cinemas being burnt in the country so making decisions on censorship is a very important responsibility that censor board has so i hope it's important to make such films like zindagi tamasha it's very important to make the film but uh, but we it but then film makers have to uh, make uh, you know like careful decisions for example shoaib mansoor also used a molvi in his film bol right uh, molvi uh, who had uh, seven eight daughters apne if you have seen bol you would know ke molvi was going to red light area and having a relationship with a prostitute and he has a daughter with the prostitute but that daughter is born out of nikah so they they were not showing molvi sleeping with the prostitute without the nikah because molvi wanted to marry the prostitute for his uh, financial reasons here you know aapne dekhi hai na bol i hope uh, you have seen this word agar hum us tarah dekhe to how come khuda movies like khuda ke liye were able to be screened in the cinema kyunki khuda ke liye bhi bahut controversial movie thi agar aap uh, us time ke hisab se dekhe aur ab agar dekhe to times have progressed i would say but in pakistan i feel like ke intolerance zyada badh gayi hai I, instead of progression i would rather say ke ideological regression zyada aa gayi hai kyunki khuda ke liye us time par रिलीज हुई थी और देखी भी गई थी और उसके आई थिंक कंट्रोवर्सी थी पर इतनी ज्यादा नहीं थी बट जिंदगी तमाशा जो है उसके ऊपर बहुत कंट्रोवर्सी और बहुत बैकलैश है तो वुडंट यू से दैट इंस्टेड ऑफ प्रोग्रेशन ज्यादा रिग्रेशन आना शुरू हो गया है और कल्चरल रीसेट हो गया व्हेन खुदा के लिए वाज रिलीज्ड आई बिलीव परवेज मुशर्रफ वाज इन पावर यू नो आई मेंशनड अर्लियर इट्स एक्सट्रीमली इंपॉर्टेंट हु इज रूलिंग द कंट्री व्हेन व्हेन सर्टेन थिंग्स हैपन i even mentioned that uh, first sindhi was produ- sindhi film was produced in reaction to one unit program of pakistan because pakistan had merged merged identities of the four provinces or pakistan had eliminated identities of the four provinces and uh, people wanted their provincial identities and sindhis in particular reacted uh, very strongly right so when you say that uh, uh, khuda ke liye was released in 2001 i can see that parvez musharraf was uh, ruling pakistan in 2001 and he was trying to be very very liberal and uh, parvez musharraf introduced electronic media expansion in 2001 and i believe uh, khuda ke liye was also released in 2001 and i said that uh, it depends on the censor board people sitting uh, on the table at the time so we will really have to look at the composition of the censor board at the time and the political environment in the country and parvez musharraf perhaps was liberal in many ways i believe his daughter and uh, son in law were studying at national college of arts back in late 1980s uh, so i can understand that uh, musharraf uh, had a different kind of uh, behavior and censor board, board formed in his era had uh, allowed khuda ke liye uh, for perhaps two reason it was uh, it was uh, it uh, addressed to 
9/11 issue did it 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 had a story one story on 9/11 issue because shan was arrested in us at the time so it uh, it addressed a very important issues because pakistan is were feeling fe facing crisis in us at the time and pakistan was considered a terrorist country for for more than a decade by the rest of the world and many people around the world still remember pakistan as a terrorist country and they think that there is a lot of terrorism in pakistan and khuda ke liye was actually showing how american street pakistan is so uh, i think it was important in that respect khuda ke liye actually had two mm. stories the other story was on um, british uh, born pakistanis so uh, and their forceful marriages with uh, their cousins from back home ji miss i would like to uh, just question this ki um, the question of intolerance that has increased like she mentioned just i don't know to uh, uh, i guess intolerance sirf uh, khuda ke liye ya bol ya zindagi tamasha jaise movies pe nahi hai because uh, abhi recently hum tv pe ek drama aaya tha it was named kun faya kun it featured imran abbas and aviza shah i guess so uh, it was banned it was banned for a few time uh, for uh, for a specific period of time and uh, its name was changed to jo tu chahe so i didn't know ke okay, what was the reason but when i certainly my family was just started because you know it's it really hum tv is the channel it that played all the day on your tv so my family was like oh your drama ban ho gaya because iska naam पता नहीं वो थोड़ा सा कॉन्ट्रोवर्शियल था तो आई जस्ट वॉच द ड्रामा फॉर द सेक ऑफ गेटिंग टू नो के वॉट वॉज द रीजन बिहाइंड इट बट आई एक्चुअली कुड एंड फाइंड बिकॉज द स्टोरी लाइन वॉज सो वीक एंड इट वॉज सच आई डोंट नो वट वॉज दैट आई वोट इवन इट कॉल इट अ ड्रामा नाउ I don't know if it was due to the censorship or not. And secondly, there was another drama few years back uh, which was Alif Allah and San. which showed the red light area and the uh, sayed family uh, in relationship with the prostitute and then he doesn't marry him and then in the end he's like ke nahi main to allah ke raste pe hi chala aur main to sahi ho gaya it was kind of weird and people didn't like ke kya hai ye kyun dekh rahe ho ye drama jaise wo drama aata tha to uh, i in my not in my home but in other families i just went and i observed that people used to change the channel when the drama used to come on air but i don't think why is it kind of i don't and i we even watched that drama as well but and there was nothing uh, so explicit or wrong with it so i don't know what kind of standards do we have for intolerance are they too weak that we that they just change the drama ke oh kun faya kun kyun hai isko jo tu chahe karo like i don't understand it the standard of uh, this I, I, you're right because it means that uh, uh, we have all kind of people in media and all kind of people in censor board and in society so somebody was definitely strongly commenting on kun faya kun because it clearly had um, the drama was definitely commenting on islam because the title was from quran right kun faya kun aapko pata hi hai na ke zameen the creation of the universe के पीछे कौन फाया कौन है राइट सो बेसिकली आई थिंक के ड्रामा वॉज ड्रामा वॉज कॉमेंटिंग ऑन रिलीजन वेरी क्लियरली सो प्रॉबली आई थिंक आई डोंट नो एंड मे बी देड मैंने ये नहीं देखा हुआ एंड आई थिंक बिकॉज माई स्टूडेंट्स नेवर रोड एन आर्टिकल ऑन दिस प्ले समाइम्स आई ट्राई टू फॉलो अप बिकॉज माई स्टूडेंट्स आर राइटिंग on a particular play for instance uh, students uh, many students wrote about mere paas tum ho right so i ended up uh, looking for uh, certain episodes on tv because i wanted to know what the drama was showing it was definitely focus on, focusing on women's uh, mobility sexuality and work and it was showing working women as uh, it was showing working women cheat uh, right so um, and uh, then another student mentioned another geo tv play uh, which also had a lot of islamic content in it uh, its uh, its title was i think alif probably 
right? You may have heard yes. of it. So alif to yes. means alif means Allah in many cases, and in drama, uh, some important characters were authors of you know they were calli uh, they were calligraphers and writing the uh, Quran themselves. Even uh, the prostitute or the woman from red light area uh, started writing uh, uh, copies of Quran in her later life before she died. So drama approached religion in a different way. It had, um, uh, you know, the protagonist's uh, grandfather was also a calligrapher. Uh, so I can understand. So I think uh, nobody objected to Alif because it treated religion differently. But I don't know how Kun Fayakun was treating religion, but it was definitely commenting on religion and society. So I can understand that uh, uh, it was banned or its title was changed uh, because of pressure from government or from the different sectors. Uh, there have been attacks on Geo Channel in the past and uh, something that uh, can disturb social order uh, would, uh, would result in certain type of bans. So I think we, what we need to do, we need to find out if somebody is interested in uh, writing on Kun Faya Kun, then we'll have to find out uh, reasons and then we'll have to find particular scenes uh, that, that actually fit the reason for banning uh, the title or banning the content of the play. Right? So we can understand that uh, there are several issue, different issues. There are uh, also Pakistan government never allows you to comment on friendly states. For example, we cannot comment on America or China negatively in our films or dramas because that then it will face censorship. It will be excised. Try reading what shapes myself before next class uh, I would have asked you to draw your own pictures if you can I can share body outlines with you if you cannot draw yourself or your own picture and I would say that I, uh, I can share body outlines that you can draw something about yourself uh, who you are what you are who is important in your life and what are your what are the priorities in your life you can draw it in any manner you can use body outline and uh, you can fill the outline inside or outside in with whatever elements you want to use so i think it will be a useful exercise in understanding uh, what we watch on tv who we are and what we like to watch Which means you understand yourself and then you understand others. If you can't draw, then just try reading the article and you would understand what it was about. Okay, we'll discuss it in next class basically. So anyone else, do you have any question about content, about assignments, about class rules, about grading criteria or any other uh, film? We will. I said that I will be adding a couple of other uh, articles and perhaps removing a couple of articles from the course outline that I discussed today. I think I will update it according to your needs. I did not uh, learn today who you, which departments you are coming from. So I think in the next five minutes, if you can briefly tell me about yourself, uh, it will be useful because it will help me uh, redesign the course accordingly. and I am from DLA. I am taking two of your courses this time along with one of Sir Kazi's that is electronic course okay. for you. All right, Anna, thank you. Uh, G next, Komal or Binish? Um, yes, I am from DLA. You are yeah. also from DLA. Okay. Yes. All right. So you are taking one course from TFT. Me, I'm taking three. You are also taking three courses. Yes. Okay. G. Binish. Uh, Miss Binish or me, psychology department. Ke 
बेनिश एंड लाइबा जी एंड नूर एज वेल ओके आप तीनों साइकोलॉजिस्ट साइकोलॉजिस्ट हैं ओके गुड मैम मैं पीएफटी से हूं मशले ज्यादा मशल यू आर फ्रॉम पीएफटी यस मैम जी कोमल यू वांटेड टू से समथिंग यू विल हैव टू अनम्यूट योरसेल्फ जी मरियम आप कौन से डिपार्टमेंट से हैं मिस आई एम फ्रॉम डीएलए एंड आई एम टेकिंग टू ऑफ योर कोर्सेज दिस सेमेस्टर द वुमेन इन मीडिया वन एंड दिस ओके ओके गुड ऑल राइट नूर Yes, I am from psychology department. All right. So we have uh, more students from psychology and DLA in the class, and we have, I think, perhaps three, four students from PFT. Okay, good. Not bad at all. All right. I think uh, we'll uh, close today's session. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. We mostly it was orientation today. We were discussing course outline. and just familiarizing with the content discussions uh, ms can you please post the paper on a uh, censorship board in the google classroom that would be really helpful okay i'll post it there i will thank you ma'am okay okay thank you okay ma'am allah thank you ms allah hafiz